Welcome to Raw and Prophetic with your host, Apostle Katrina Garrett. Raw and Prophetic is where we are real, we are anointed, we are women, and we are prophetic. On this podcast, you will be encouraged through the Word of God to step in your purpose-driven assignment from the Lord and to be inspired and encouraged to be all that God has called you to be. So, welcome to our podcast. Here is your host, Apostle Katrina Garrett. Well, good morning, good morning to you. Welcome to Raw and Prophetic. Praise God where we are real. We are anointed. We are women and we are prophetic. On this beautiful Monday morning, sunny blue skies right here in Jacksonville, Florida, coming to you right here on Raw and Prophetic. Thank you so much for listening. If you are new to the broadcast, we welcome you. I am your host, Apostle Katrina Garrett. And we just thank you for listening. Listen, if you want to connect, please like our page, Raw and Prophetic, on Facebook. You can also connect with me under Kingdom Girl Creations. Um, that is my TikTok page. I also have a Facebook page. But you, if you're you know interested in some of the little crafty things that I do, you are also welcome to connect with me on my page, Kingdom Girl Creations. Blessings and peace to you on this beautiful day. I just want to come on real quickly and encourage the prophetic people. And if you are a prophet, apostle, and you are in the making, I um, just want to encourage you on this morning. And today I'm going to talk about um, just just going through the process of your prophetic anointing and i'm going to talk about this maybe for the next couple of days or so however god's spirit jesus christ uh, spirit leads me and so what we're going to talk about to today is we're going to talk about um the uh your, your mind the mindset um, first and foremost as you know when you're called to be a prophet um there are some that even in the days of the New Testament, because we are New Testament prophets. And um, I call some of those who are called to a ministry or a church, or maybe you have the gift of prophecy, minor prophets. But then you have those who are called to uh, great uh, men and women of God, called to kings and princes, maybe called to nations. And they are major prophets. And so... um, you just get before the Lord and allow God to uh, show you and, and, and teach you your DNA in the prophetic and who you are. And as you mature and grow, you'll know, you'll know because the spirit of God will confirm it. He always confirms his word. He also confirms his gifts. That's why in, in the uh, uh, the Bible, in the book of Ephesians, it said, and he gave some. So if the Bible says that Jesus gave some these the gifts, then he's definitely going to confirm who he has chosen. The Bible also said God chooses whom he pleases. Okay. And so we're going to talk about um, just the process of being made in a prophetic. Now, one of the things I've learned and I've also been taught that it generally takes about 20 years or more um, to develop in your fullness in the prophetic mantle upon your life. Um, you have what you call seasoned prophets, okay? Um, that's the, Most people who are seasoned in the prophetic are seasoned prophets has gone through their years of distinctive tra- of, of, of transformation. They've gone through years of distinctive training by the Spirit of God and those that they have set um, over them in leadership. Um, don't ever think you being a prophet or even apostle that there's no accountability a god will always place somebody who is an elder in the spirit for you to get uh some um 
Now, I'm not going to say chastening, but to get some spiritual counsel. Because even the Lord himself, um, and through what the Bible, it talks about how God even called the counsel of heaven. Even when God created the earth, he said, let us make man. And who was he talking to? He was talking to the counsel in heaven. And even there were times that God would even speak to the council before he would make certain decisions, even though he's sovereign and he's God. But God had a he has a council around him. And so, um, you know, the Bible talks speaks about being under the council of, of men. And and so don't think because, well, I'm a prophet and I don't need nobody. It's just me and the Holy Spirit. No, that's going to open up the devil to attack your mind. And why does Satan attack our mind. What is that? Is one of the greatest um, uh, battles that a prophetic person has to fight. Number one, a prophetic person has to fight the words and voices of those who are against them, and then they have to also battle with those words in their mind. Okay, and so the greatest commandment that God told us to do is not not only did He tell us to love us with all of our heart. But he also told us, Jesus told us, to love us, to love him with all our mind. And this is one of the main reasons why Satan likes to battle. Um, you know how your heart can be directed to go one way, but then this, but then, but then, your mind will begin to wander somewhere else. And so Jesus said unto them in Matthew 22, 37, 38, Jesus said unto them, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. So Satan battles your mind because it what? It's closely tied to um, the spirituality in your heart and in your mouth. So out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Your heart begins to have the heart begins to tell the mind what to do and say okay the heart tells the mind you have your brain is what operates you to move your fingers and to open your mouth and so that's your mind your brain your mind and so um but those things that proceed and out of the mouth and come from from the heart they can defile a man right there are things that can that can defile us because what comes out of our mouths and as prophetic people, because you are a voice for the Lord and you've been chosen to be a voice of God, you have to learn how to use your mouth wisely. You have to learn how to use your mouth strategically um, because sometimes the enemy will do uh, little things to try to get you to speak against God and when you are when and, and this is why the Lord tells us to love us not just with our hearts but with our minds because when you um begin to uh speak against God or you begin to uh try to battle the first thing that you start doing is questioning the authority of God God is sovereign and he knows that Whatever he says, he's going to do it. Without, it's not. It's going to happen. It's, it's just going to simply happen. So when when he tells us something or he shows us something, and we begin to battle in our mind, then we are now putting ourselves in opposition of questioning the, the God's authority. Okay, in order for us to operate in authority as uh, prophets or apostles. We have to learn how to submit to authority and to obey authority. You know, and you, you, there, God is, the Bible says that everything the Lord does, he's at the author of confusion. God is at the author of confusion. So the first thing you must understand is that when you have been chosen, ordained by the Holy Spirit, and, and, and then there is um, confusion involved, you confuse. I don't know what to do. I don't know why. I don't, I, I thought I heard... That ain't God because God, whatever the Lord tells you to do, whatever he gives you an assignment to do, it should not be any confusion. Okay. And you have to be very careful because there are times that people that God has placed over you can uh, allow the enemy to seep in and, and try to bring confusion. So one thing about the, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit enlightens truth. Okay. He enlightens truth. There is nothing hidden with God. Everything is brought to the light. Everything is brought to the light. So 
if there is a, a time where someone tries to secretly tell you to meet with them or I, I, I need to secretly mentor you and all of these type of things secretly, you know, some of these secret mothers and fathers in the spirit realm, that ain't God. Amen. That's not God because God will have somebody who has uh, a, 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 a good report of good reputation to equip you and to train you in your gift. Amen. Let's make something really clear here, though. I don't want to sit here and say that people teach you prophecy. Prophecy is not taught. Okay. The gift of prophecy is already in you. The mantle of the prophet is already in you. But the the, the elders and the seasoned prophets are there to help you, to pray for you, and to also teach you from their experience some of the pitfalls they might have fallen in so that you don't fall in the pitfall. Or I'll say this, even if you fall in the pitfall, in the pit, you won't stay there. Because that's why so many people who are prophetic are sitting up under bridges begging for money on the streets, um, drugs, alcohol. They they had a, a, a very uh, powerful anointed call upon their life. And this is why we see not just prophets, but it can be pastors, evangelists, teachers as well. Uh, they're, they're sitting on the bridges. They're begging for money. They're on the streets. Um, don't think for a moment those people were ordained and also called by God. Some of them, though, some of them were, but the mind Satan has uh, gotten into their mind and, and, and people have a real hard time fighting against uh, words, uh, people who oppose them, people who may not validate them, people who may not acknowledge them. Those are things that you should not even look for anyway in being a prophetic. What the, the main the main thing you should really be concerned about is what the spirit of of Christ is saying concerning your your your, your ministry and your mantle. Um, and and so if you stay if you stay in prayer and you stay uh, submissive to uh, the spirit of God and the and, and Christ, He'll always confirm. When, even when someone will try to come and and dis qualify you god will qualify you and and, and the lord will let them know um it, 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 he, he, he sometimes god let it be known openly that he has ordained you and so um fiery darts you know one of the things one of the fiery darts that uh satan uses is uh uh as i said he uses words but one in the old testament time fiery darts were used as weapons of warfare and they were hollow reeds filled with material that would burn easily. So, you know, that back then in the in the ancient days, that's what they used. They would, if you watch like some of those King Arthur movies, I used to love to watch those type of movies, those Excalibur type movies, those those uh, old King Arthur movies. Um, I, I guess it was medieval back in the day when I was younger, and um, and so you would see them set the the dart on fire. And, and and shoot the arrow, the dart at the at the opponent at the enemy, and so they were they were called fiery darts because they was, you know they that that was a part of warfare, and and, and they were hollow reeds filled with you know some type of material that would burn, and so you know do you ever notice that sometimes they would sometimes they would light the fire, and and shoot it, but then sometimes they would just shoot it and then it would kind of catch on fire, and and that's how they fought. And so they were set on fire and then shot from the bows, you know, and, 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 and they were excellent weapons. Why? Because when they would do this, it would cause the, the walls or the city, because see, whenever they would go to battle, they had to fight uh, to break down the stronghold, which was the walls. They built up a wall to protect the, 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 the castle, the kings. And so... It was it was an excellent weapon against walled cities, okay? Because if they if they shot them over the wall into the city, it would catch fire. And and see back then they didn't have fire trucks, okay? The people had to go get pails of water to put the fire out. So if they shot a lot of fiery de- darts at the at the enemy, then they they took they took um, uh, them captive. They took possession. OK, and so it would ignite the roofs of, of their houses 
to catch a fire. And then, of course, the fire was spread down. All right. So in Ephesians 6, 11 through 17, Paul, he tells us that spiritual battle with Satan. He speaks of fiery darts of the wicked one. OK, he continues to shoot those fiery darts. Why? Because it's aimed at your mind. The same way it's they shot the fiery darts over the wall and there and they were trained and equipped to shoot those darts over the wall to try to hit the rooftops of the houses. When you start with the head, it burns down to the ground. OK, and isn't it amazing that even in the days of the old, in the Old Testament, Paul's used this same spiritual synopsis to show us that we can be, we are attacked the same way. Fiery darts comes to, 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 to burn up the things of God so that you'll be You'll be, your mind is filled with failure. Your mind is filled with defeat. Your mind is filled with insecurity. Your mind is filled with procrastination. Your mind is filled with doubt. Your mind is filled with fear. All of those things, those, that's, what, that's, what the, that's what Satan likes to use. Okay? And so uh, uh, the Apostle Paul, he warns us not to be shaken. Okay, in our minds, he warns us, and 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 he warns us. He said, "Let take hold of something." He said, "Take hold of the word of God. Put on the armor of God." All right. Um. Satan has many uh, stubble methods of attacking your mind. Oh, now he got social media. You know, he got, he got, uh, uh, TikTok. He got, all, he got all kind of tools now he can use against you, against me. If we let him, you know, uh, I, I was talking to the prophetess and she was saying that, uh, her apostle was asking her, everybody, uh, in what ways does Satan have authority? How does the enemy have authority over us? And, you know, and everybody was, you know, trying to figure out the answer. And she said, she said it just as simple and just as meek and pleasant. She said, he has authority by what we give him. Okay. That's why the Bible says to resist the devil and he shall flee from you. So even as prophetic people, you have to resist the devil, because he's coming after you. He gonna come after us more than the sword in the world. You mouthpiece of God. You gonna you you are you are a a mouthpiece for somebody else's deliverance, for somebody else's healing, for somebody else's uh, liberation, for somebody else to get set free, for somebody else to be transformed, for somebody else to be renewed, and you are the mouthpiece that will utter the spirit of uh, the words of God into this person's spirit. So Satan's job is to destroy you. That's what the Bible says. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. He comes to steal the things that God has said about you and promised you. And then as he steals it, then he, he, he goes to kill your spirit. And once your spirit is killed, it will utterly destroy you. You know why? Because so many people, you know how he does it when they get it, when he gets in your head and you, you're not obeying God and you out here doing any and everything and you running around. Then what ends up happening is condemnation begins to come upon you because, you know, you're supposed to be, you know, in the house of God. You know, you're supposed to be where you are. You know, you, you're supposed to be in the ministry. I'm going to say this. You might be in the house of God and still not doing what the spirit of God has told you to do, what Jesus Christ has unctioned you to do. And you are um, battling with yourself. You're battling within your mind. You're procrastinating. I've been there, done that. Been so many times God has told me to do certain things in the past and I would procrastinate. And, and, and procrastination is a thief. It comes to take 
your time. You'll procrastinate for days. Should I do this? And you'll put things off. And you'll say, well, I'll do this this day and do this that day. And then next thing you know, as, as you begin to procrastinate, your spirit man slowly begins to die out. And then next thing you know, you're utterly destroyed because now you have you have allowed five years, 10 years, whatever to go by. And now you feel like you're so behind and you're so lost that you can't come back. And that's what ends up with a lot of people in the prophetic. They, they just give up because they, they did not. They allowed the fiery darts that Satan spoke, you know, your mind, your mind, your mind. He he likes to get in your head. Remember on Ike and Tina when when Tina Turner now I'm not saying this I'm just using it as a you know, just a, a little bit of, of a example. But it's not biblical. But 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 Tina she got into Buddhism and, and, and so she had to meditate, which that wasn't good, but she should she should have got with Jesus Christ, but she still got with she still got with um uh this Buddhist or whatever she was. And and so Ike came up to her and he said listen Ann and see she she had a stage name she had a different name she was given a new name Tina Turner but but Ike would always try to go to the Ann in her you know cuz he knew that 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 Tina was fierce Tina was talented Tina was gifted Tina was 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 she was an influencer she influenced the people the people loved her and so so Ike went to her and said and you can't you can't get away from me because I'm in here. He said, I'm in your mind. I'm in your head. And when she realized that she could make it in this business and she could do it on her own, she really didn't need Ike. Because to be honest with you, uh, a lot of people in that lived in those days, my mama and them even said it. Tina really didn't need Ike. And he knew that. He wasn't a singer. He was just the... Um, producer and you know the, her manager but he played music he didn't need her if she decided with somebody else she could have you know been sex, just as successful so <clears throat> that's what the devil would do he'll try to get in your head and have you start questioning God's authority the same way he did Eve cause he asked Eve did, did God say you will die See, when we begin to question God's authority, that's what can lead us to our temptation. And then it leads us to birth sin. Jesus said that all power and authority, that's what the Bible says, let this mind be in you as it is also in Christ Jesus. Because when your mind is in Christ, my mind is in Christ then when the enemy shoots those darts at you, you can do you can begin to speak God's word. You can begin to speak what Jesus told us to say. Okay? You can you see one thing about it, Satan wants you to think that you're your own God. You know, and, and, and so deception starts coming in as a prophet. You start thinking you're like God and then you you start thinking know the future so much it's, it's I, I know what God showed me and then and then you start you start uh uh thinking that um there are more ways to heaven than than Jesus the deception comes in where you know God is too good to send anybody to hell then deception comes in with I'm uh, you know you're not blessed unless you're you're prosperous in health and and wealth and uh, you know I'm not saying that we shouldn't be healthy and wealthy but you, your message is turning toward that because you've been you've been deceived that's what Satan did he didn't he didn't he didn't tempt see Eve Eve was already tempted by her own lust he just deceived her by allowing her to question. God's authority. And so one of the things that, that Satan also uses is seducing spirits. Seducing spirits always attack the mind. That's why you have people who join cults. And you being a prophet of God, you have to be very careful who you connect with. You know, I remember in my early years, I used to run down the altar every time somebody called an altar call. And my husband told me, you need to stop doing that. And I'm like, no, I want the glory. But then I had to battle with so much stuff in my mind. 
I remember I would go to different meetings and by the time I got home, I was crazy. I, I was like, all of a sudden I was depressed. So maybe all of a sudden I was, you know, uh, uh, irritated and, and, and aggravated. It was because I was running up, allowing all these people to lay their hands on me. And these spirits was trying to seduce my mind. I had to keep running to people to get validation that I was a prophet. And God, God had to show me that you, you run into the wrong people. The same people who would speak blessings on me as long as I was doing everything under their control. You know, I was this anointed prophet of God. But as soon as I did something that they didn't like, then they began to speak that I was not called by God. And, and I was a premature and I was an Ishmael and my ministry was an Ishmael. My husband's ministry was Ishmael. Things like that that we had to walk through. And I had to learn over time. That I had to seek uh, the spirit of Christ, get before Jesus, and allow him to teach me. And as he taught me, he taught me who to connect to. The Holy Spirit, I would pray before I even would connect with anybody. Before I wouldn't pray. I would just connect. I was happy somebody wanted to be a part. And then when I when I when I would you know get involved in this person these people was coming with seducing spirits trying to get in my head trying to get in my mind and I had to learn how to break free and it wasn't until I really got in a place of prayer I closed myself in the house went on a fast and the Lord began to rebuke me he began to correct me he began to chastise me and he showed me that this is what it, this is what it is this is where you are and so once I once once he delivered me and my eyes was open, then I, I learned to be strategic. I learned I didn't have to get a prophetic word all the time. When I went somewhere and they, they didn't prophesy to me, hey, it was what it was. It wasn't it wasn't God wasn't speaking to me. It wasn't my time. And I didn't take offense to it. I just kept um teaching the word. I kept staying in Christ. You know, one of the things I loved about Billy Graham's ministry and why he grew so much is because he lifted up Jesus. He never lifted up himself. He never lifted up his ministry. It was always the message of Christ. And if being a prophet, you are Christ's ambassador. You are called to speak on behalf of the Lord Jesus. But, but, but listen, you can't go to the Father without going through the Son. And you have a lot of prophetic people say, God told me, God told me, God told me. But they don't never say nothing about the Son. They don't never say anything about Jesus. It's always God said. No. The spirit of the Lord shall speak because God speaks to, to us through his son. He does not speak directly to us. We are going out of order. If you say God told me, but you never went through the sun, then you are out of order because there is all there is order in heaven. There's order and authority. Jesus said all power and authority has been given to him. So you got to have a relationship with Christ. Even just just to say that you are walking in the prophetic, just to say that you're a prophet. And there are so many prophetic people who rarely even talk about Christ. And, and, and when you don't hear them ever talk about Christ, those are seducing spirits. And they'll talk great swelling words and they'll sound good. And guess what? They can see too. They, can, they, they have familiar spirits and they can see your, see your past, see where you've been. But they ain't got your future in their mouth. They think they got your future in their mouth. No, seducing spirits don't have your future because they're not omnipresent present like God. See, God sees your future. God knows where you're going to be in 30 years. God knows where you're going to be in five years. A seducing spirit don't know where you're going to be in five years. But a seducing spirit knows where you came from because they're familiar with you. They're familiar. They've been around your family. They've been in, in the lineage of your, in the generation of your family or maybe in the, in the generation of that church. So they're familiar with you. And so what they, the reason why people get bewingled is because they have spoken something that you have been through of your past. And now you say, oh, they must be a prophet because how they know I went through this. They, they, they seduce the spirits. They seduce the spirits. And they've gotten in your mind. They, they listen to you talk. They listen to you, some of the things you might say. They might ask people questions about you and then try to come to you and act like they know you. And they don't know you, but they act like they know you. They try to be familiar with you. That's why, how do you be familiar with somebody but being around them? Getting, the more you're around a certain individual, the more you are familiar with them. And when you are familiar with them, then you kind of know how they're going to act. You kind of learn their way. 
But see, God holds their future in in His mouth, and so they can't they can't prophesy your future. They'll try to, and and most of the time they off and they wrong. But they trying to prophesy your future, and usually it's future of failure because that's what they want you to believe. And and if you believe that and you put that in your mind, then you're going to be fighting against yourself. Because you're going to feel like the, what this, the prophet said. The prophet said they was never a prophet. They was a seducing spirit that operated. And I'm not going to say they might not be a prophet. They might have been at one time a prophet, but they have allowed seducing spirits, a lying spirit, to come into them and tell you these lies. Because that's what the, the devil does. He's, a, he's the father of lies. And so the Satan don't want you to complete your purpose and destiny as a prophet. So he'll use people to come and deceive you and they have to get in your head how does it get in your head through signs and wonders that's why jesus called them a wicked generation because they was always looking for a sign you know signs and wonders ain't always it but the bible talks about how the, how the antichrist will move in lying wonders and many people are going to take the mark because they're going to think that's god they're going to think it's christ and so the Bible says, be not deceived, for God is not mocked. For whatever a man shall uh, sow, he shall also reap. And so you must understand that you can't be deceived by the mockery that people are doing. And right now, mockery is, is, is so at hand. People just use God's name any kind of way. There's no reverence and respect of God in the times we're looking at. I remember when I was in the world, I cussed people out. But one thing about it, when I got around people that I knew was of God, I respected them. But today, they don't respect that. They don't care if you're an apostle. They don't care who you are today. There's no reverence of godly fear. And so we're living in the last days. We are end time prophets. We are end time apostles. We are end time evangelists. We are end time pastors and end time teachers. We are living in the last days. The Spirit of the Lord showed me the homosexual spirit was the last thing. That uh, has to be accepted before the Antichrist comes besides the falling away. And so there's a falling away. But now we we've legalized same sex marriage. When you talk about same sex or you're against it, people want to crucify you. They're ready to put you on the cross. You got people shows getting shut down. Because they talking against uh, homosexuality, they're talking against these things. Yes. Even on my podcast, I read the uh, rules and regulations, and it was saying that you cannot speak against this or advocate hate. Now, they call it hate when you talk against homosexuality, but I'm not speaking any hate. I'm not saying put your hands on nobody that's homosexual or, or beat them in any form or fashion. But what I'm saying is it's not natural. It's not of God. It is, But it is one of the last spirits that we have accepted because we've accepted we've accepted uh, shacking. We've, ex we've accepted, uh, I'm not saying it as, as the, the righteous. I'm talking the church, the church folks. We've accepted cussing. Oh, it, it's, it's people that think it's, uh, it's, that they're saved and, I, and they got a cussing demon in them. And I'm saying, I ain't bound about I'm cussing. But you got a cussing spirit. It's the unclean spirit. You still ain't going to make it into heaven with an unclean demon unless you repent. You got you got people that 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 we've accepted cussing, we've accepted we've accepted uh, uh, murderers, we've accepted this stuff in the church, we've accepted gossip, we've accepted strife, we can we've accepted contentions, we've accepted teenage pregnancy. All this stuff has been accepted. We don't preach against this stuff. Now homosexuality has got to be accepted, and it's being accepted. You got gay churches, you got all this stuff. This we are. This is end time. We're in, and we're in the last days for real, not just the last days. We're down to the last minutes before those trumpets will sound. And it's important that we gird up our loins and we begin to be a and, and begin to be who God called us and sound the alarm. We got to sound the alarm. Because I'm telling you, we live in some radical times. We live in some radical times. And so... Um, I'm going to pray for you because I only have a few more minutes here left. And so um, just we're going to continue on talking about the process of, of growing in your prophetic mantle. And um, we're just going to just continue on uh, discussing this and how how because I love how the Lord showed us tonight. Don't allow the fiery dot to get in your head, in your mind. Okay. 
Because one of the things that, that, that Satan loves to do is he wants to keep the unbelievers blinded. And by you being a prophet of God, he wants you to walk in unbelief. And that's what will anger God. Okay? Doubt some doesn't always anger God. He gets a little frustrated when we doubt him. But doubt is basically saying, well, Lord, I do believe. But, you know, I'm just hoping and wondering. But when you flat out say, I just don't believe God. I don't have no. Unbelief is what makes him angry. And when he tells us to do something and we don't do it or we don't operate in action, then that's that's basically saying that we don't believe what God said about us. He gets mad when we don't believe what he said about you. Amen. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we just praise you. We just bless your name on today. And we just open up, you know, ourselves to you, Holy Spirit, to come in and have your way to teach us, to equip us, to show us, and to, to mold us, to cultivate us. Um, according to your word and and, and and that we will we will develop a kingdom culture versus a worldly culture and that we will do what you have asked us to do. God give us the strength, Holy Spirit, Father God, Lord Jesus, to continue on being obedient and, 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 and knowing your voice. For Jesus, you said that my my sheep know my voice and any other they will not follow. So give us the, the, the spirit of discernment in this hour to discern when you are speaking and that we can discern whether it's you or if it's our flesh or whether it's the enemy. And we will forever be grateful. Father God, I pray for those who are walking in a prophetic mantle now to be equipped. I pray that you'll continue on keeping them um, under your shadow of your wings, that they continue to mature, to blossom, and to grow and mature in Christ. And Lord, I just thank you for the men and the women of God that you placed over them. I pray that they are godly men and women of God that is that is equipping them, that is just encouraging them and strengthening them in their call. And so, Lord, we just give you the praise and the glory, and we ask that you continue to give us your strength and uh, continue to keep us in, from evil and strengthen us. Um, especially at such a time as this. And we ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Thank you so much for listening to Raw and Prophetic. Um, God is an awesome God. And um, if you're again new to the podcast, welcome. Raw and Prophetic, where we are real, we are anointed, we are women, and we are prophetic. Amen. And so we're going to continue our studies on the process of the prophetic. And, um, and, um, I'm just going to let the Holy Ghost have its way. <laughs> I'm just going to say it like that. But anyway, have a blessed day. I pray that your day is filled with love and peace and joy. Um, I am going to post this at a later time of day. So if you're going to be just listening tonight, just enjoy. <laughs> God bless you. Thank you again for listening to Raw and Prophetic. And remember, be blessed and be May hope.